Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live. And today I'm going to show you how I made a card. Um, oh, I guess it's all scooted down here on my um, uh, paper. So how I made a card with the uh, Stampin' Up! Lighting the Way Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the bundles from the new uh, upcoming mini catalog. And goodness, I am all sorts of crazy on my, <laughs> my video today. So um, this is a new stamp set bundle that will be available from Stampin' Up! beginning on January 5th. And um, this catalog is the January to April 2023 mini catalog. And it's got lots of really cute and really pretty uh, stamp sets in it. This is one that I love. Hey, Carol, thanks for joining today. This is one that I love. And, um, um, you know, it's just, it's too cute. It's easy to use. Um, and it's just fun. So, <laughs> so I made a quick card with it today. Oh, my camera is just all messed up. Goodness. Okay. I don't know if I'm making it better or worse. So, um, hey, Karen and Elise, I'm glad you're here as well. So this is the card we're making today. It's pretty quick and simple. Hi, Gwen. Thanks for joining from North Carolina as well. Um, this is the Lighting the Way stamp set. It is got some good sentiments in it. I love the mixed fonts in it. Love the little lightning bug images or um, fireflies, depending on what you call them. <laughs> so, uh, hey, Roxanne, glad you're here as well. Um, so this has got lots of fun images in it. And then I love this lantern. And I love that it's got uh, the little firefly pieces that you can actually die cut and put together without even having to stamp anything. So there are some little accessory um, bugs as well. And then there are the stamped images that um, you can die cut with the uh, set of dies called Lighting the Way as well. Again, this is bundled together in the catalog to save 10% and will be available starting on January 5th to order from Stampin' Up! Um, so I know the lantern is, it's just really cool. <laughs> it's a good stamp set all the way around and a great bundle. Um, and one other thing that I did use on here is I used this little almost kind of square looking uh, die from the stitched rectangle dies and I used that to cut out my little sentiment here. Um, but other than that, that's kind of all that I used, some papers and um, that's about it. So, hey Jean, glad you're here and yay, Darlene is here as well, glad you were able to hop on. So let me set the dies aside. A couple things to talk about quickly before we get going. Um, my, I have a designer series paper share that it, it, the signups are going on through the 4th of January and you get a nice sampling of all of the new designer series papers from the upcoming January to June or January to April, I'm sorry, 2023 mini catalog. Um, so you get six by six pieces of all the designer series papers. Uh, if you get the double share, you can get six by 12 pieces of anything that's 12 by 12 to start with. Uh, all the details are on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. So go take a peek. It's a good way to get kind of a nice working sample of all the papers and then you can decide which ones you like best in order full packs so definitely it's it's just it's a good set no matter what so and I know I'm glad that it was I was right up there at the top of my list as well Jean so I'm glad that you liked it too and Deb is here so thanks for joining um all right last chance stamp it up the July to December 2022 mini catalog and I can't even believe it's 2023 in like two days day and a half whatever it is so but the 2023 uh, mini catalog, or, I'm sorry, 2022 mini catalog, the last chance products are available through January 4th while supplies last. Um, so go out and get your things ordered that you're needing from the current mini catalog. A lot of things are selling out, so make sure you're getting your order put in early. A bunch of things are on sale as well. All right, so let's get going on this card. Um, I have, uh, for my original card, it was actually a top fold, so it's kind of the standard one that I like to make, um, but I wanted to show you that you can also do a, a book fold card if you prefer that um, fold for your cards. You can do the same thing with this uh, design that I put together, so either way it works. Um, this is a piece of fa uh, Fancy Flora 6x6 designer shade paper, and it's one of the papers that's actually in my share. So if you want a sampling of this, you can definitely get it. It's beautiful paper. Um, it's kind of that uh, acrylic paint look. I think it's acrylic paint or oil paint or whatever. Um, but it's got lots of beautiful colors in it. And um, like I said, the one that I used is a little bit more kind of of the neutrals, the blues and the greens. Um, and I have a, a soft succulent card base. Um, hey Tara, thanks for hopping in from Tennessee as well. Uh, this card base is cut to five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter in the middle. My original card base was cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half across the top. So you can use this with either card base, whichever one you prefer. And then, hey, Karen, thanks for joining. And then uh, this is a piece of the Fancy Flora 6x6 Designer Series paper. Again, that'll be available starting on January 5th. 
and I've cut it to about four and a quarter by five and a half, so hopefully it will fit perfectly on the card front if I have everything cut correctly and glued straight. <laughs> it should fit on there and cover the whole card front. All right, so we've got that glued down. Um, then I've got a couple pieces of cardstock here. This is basic white, and I have cut that to uh, three and a quarter by four and a half. So it's about an inch shorter um, on the top and the side from your card front. And this is basic white. And then I have a piece of soft succulent that is an eighth of an inch longer and wider. So this one's cut to about three and three eighths by about uh, four and five eighths. And again, all the details will be on my blog tomorrow. So don't worry about writing any of this down or you know trying to figure out exactly um, what the measurements are. So I'm gonna start with some Daffodil Delight ink. And I've got the little lantern, um, the little um, light for the lantern, I should say, from the Lighting the Way stamp set. We are going to stamp that in the Daffodil Delight ink on this panel of basic white cardstock. And I don't know, I should probably, I've got my lantern die here, so I should probably kind of get a little, a little bit of a feel. Um, if you're wanting to kind of judge where things are going to land, you can always put your dies on there like I just did, and then stamp it. And you're not ever going to get, unless you use a stamparatus or something, you're never going to get it in exactly the same spot, but close enough. So, all right. And then I've got the new small blending brush, which I don't know if you've seen these yet, but they're very cool. Um, I love them, obviously, for smaller things. And I'm the little Daffodil Delight ink, and I'm just going to try to make it look like it's glowing a little bit around that um, stamped image. So I don't need to put a whole ton of ink on here, but just give it a little bit of a kind of a highlight around the stamped image and make it look like your lantern is glowing. May do one more time here quick and we'll call that good. All right, and then I've got, oh, almost stuck my fingers right in the ink pad. Um, I have got soft succulent ink here and I use that to kind of make it look like it was grounded. So I just use the standard blending brush, the regular size one um, for my soft succulent because it's a little bit wider of an area. So um, you can use the small ones if you want to, but the um, larger blending brush will just get the ink on there a little bit faster. And again, just um, the technique that I use when I'm putting uh, ink with a blending brush on cardstock is I put the ink on the brush, do a little swirl on my scrap paper, and then go to my project with it. Um, sometimes you get a little glob or a dark spot in your ink, and in order to avoid that, um, you can just, if you go to your um, scrap paper first, that kind of takes a lot of the globs off of it, so you don't end up with a dark spot that you're trying to blend out. All right, so let me set that aside and close up the ink pad. And then um, I did go ahead ahead of time from the copper foil sheets. I cut with the lantern die from the Lighting the Way dies. Just cut a piece of um, copper foil sheets with the lantern die. So pretty easy, just ran it through the die cutting machine. And I'm gonna take a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue and we're gonna stick it right on here over the top of my stamped kind of light image on here. And I'm adhering the, the lantern first. I'm using liquid glue, multi-purpose liquid glue. And it doesn't take a ton. Just put a little bit all around um, on the bottom and a little bit on the top. Whoop, almost dropped it. Goodness. Um, but there we go. I don't know. I was going to say something else. I'm sure very enlightening about it. <laughs> so, oh, the reason I put down the lantern first instead of stamping the little lightning bug images on here or the little um, dots for the lightning bug is I wanted to make sure I knew where my lantern was going to land so that I can kind of aim my lightning bugs around it. And then I'm going to grab the littler dot from the, uh, yeah, the copper paper is really pretty with that die cut. So <laughs> it's, I agree, it's, it looks, it's pretty. So all right, so I have got Daffodil Delight ink again and the littler dot from the uh, Lighting the Way stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp three little dots on here. So I'm going to do one up a little higher, uh, one over a little bit, and then one down a little bit lower. And again, these are always going to end up in a different spot unless you use a Stamparatus to stamp everything exactly, um, which is hard to do with just a single little dot. So uh, there we go. So we've got that done. And I'm going to set this... Oh, actually, I'm going to stick it to my... Um, panel of soft suede cardstock before I lose track of what I'm doing and put it on the card front too so I don't lose all my pieces here. All right, using stamp and seal to do that. 
And again, um, the measurement on this is about three and a quarter by four and a half. And then I've got the um, soft succulent cardstock panel cut to about an eighth of an inch bigger. So, hey, Deborah, um, missed about the paper share. Can you tell me more? Um, it's all out on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. But basically, you just are going to get a six by six piece of all of the designer series papers. Whoop, picking off the backing before I stick it on. Uh, from the upcoming catalog. So um, again, all the papers that I'm including in the share are listed out there, the prices and all that stuff, um, all listed out on my blog. Again, just go to stampwithamyk.com and find the information. Um, it should be on today's blog post with a link to the description of what I'm doing for my paper share. So hopefully that helps you. Um, yes, you do need this set. <laughs> Definitely, it's a good one. All right, so I've got my card front here, and then I'm just going to try to get it centered um, top to bottom and side to side. There we go. All right, and it's set that aside, and we're going to do a little bit of stamping. I do do a couple of the lightning bugs ahead of time just because, you know, it's the same thing, stamp, die cut, stamp, die cut, and I didn't want you to have to watch me that, um, do that ten times. Hold on one second. Ah, my nose is dripping today. I'm not sure why, so... All right, so I've got my little lightning bug in gray granite ink. Um, let me get, ink that up and get it stamped here. Oh, you know what? I use basic gray instead of gray granite. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me go grab the right ink pad. I knew that did not look right, but it didn't look... Uh, anyway, all good. All right, that was an easy fix. <laughs> so basic gray, um, scratch that I said gray granite. Um, I was like, I know I could see the, the bug when I was stamping it before. There we go, that looks much better. <laughs> All right, let me close that up and then grab my little, um, the smaller dot again from the uh, Lighting the Way stamp set in Daffodil Delight ink. And we're just gonna stamp it again. You can see through it pretty well and it doesn't need to be perfect. Just gonna stamp it over the bottom half of the um, lightning bug so that um, it looks like he's glowing when you cut him out too. Or she's glowing, I don't know if the boy lightning bugs or girl ones or whatever, I don't know which ones glow or maybe they both do. Um, I've got soft succulent ink for the greenery images. And again, these all come from the Lighting the Way stamp set. Just gonna ink them up and stamp them here on my basic white cardstock panel and try to stamp them far enough apart that I can get the die cut done easily with one pass, hopefully, uh, through my die cutting machine. All right, let me set that aside. And then I'm gonna grab the dies, the coordinating dies. So we've got um, this one that cuts that stamped image. This one will cut this stamped image. If I can get them on here straight. And then this one will cut this one. And then there are a couple different sizes of the lightning bugs. So we are gonna take the medium sized one. There are two small, one larger, and then the medium sized one. And the medium sized one is the one that I stamped. So that is the die that we're gonna use here. So I'm gonna be off screen for a second and away from the camera, so don't panic. I will um, call them lightning bugs and we call them fireflies. Yeah, I know, and I go back and forth between the two. So, cause I grew up in the north and then moved to the south and I know they're called different things in each location. <laughs> So, all right, so let me do a little die cutting here. I'm going to step away from my camera so my voice will fade out, but I'll be right back. So hold on. All right, hopefully y'all enjoyed your Christmas and had a good holiday. We did. It was cold. But all good, so... All right, of course, I'm trying to get these lined up quick. And it never goes quick when I want it to. Come on, little lightning bug. All right. Oh, almost got it. There we Pulling the dies off here and pulling my stamped images out. All right. 
And my leaf here, um, I did not cut it very nicely. The die slid as I was running it through, but it's okay because it's actually all gonna be covered except for the top part anyway, so we're all good. So, all right, let me um, pull out the other pieces here that I die cut. I actually, I must admit that I kind of stole a little bit of the inspiration for this um, from the, the catalog. There's a card that's similar. It's not exactly the same. I changed up a few things on it, but a similar card in there. And I love the design. I love the layout and I love this bundle. So I just decided I'd make it in my own style. So, um, bold light mating. Oh, oh, both light. Oh, okay. So it's amazing. Okay. I wondered if they both did or if just one did and you know, bugs are weird things. <laughs> so, um, you did, yep. We did have a paper pumpkin not too long ago with a lantern like this, but I love that we have the dye and we can make our own now. So, all right. So I'm sticking on with mini glue dots and just sticking them right over the top. Kind of trying to, again, not perfectly line up, but just lining up the dot that I stamped on here with the dot on the back end of my little lightning bug. And then I'm gonna start adhering the die cut little branches on here. So, got this one. And put another little glue dot maybe up here so that it hopefully stays put. And then I'm just gonna tuck it in here around my lightning bug or firefly, whatever you wanna call it. And then I'm gonna take my other little die cut leaves, branches, and, and um, we'll go ahead and stick this one over the top. And it's gonna cover up a little bit on the lantern and that is just fine. And then the final one, I'm gonna stick over the top of all the others here. Whoop, almost got my glue dot on there crazy. So take a couple glue dots to stick that on. Used to imagine fireflies could talk to each other in Morse code. They probably can. <laughs> They're probably smarter than we ever realize and smarter than most of us are probably. So, all right. So I have got the, um, the little bunch of branches die cut and stuck on here. And then I'm going to take some of the pretty new, this is new ribbon. It is the balmy blue and white variegated ribbon and it's a half inch in length or half inch wide, I should say, and I'm gonna cut a length of it and we're gonna stick it here on the card front. So when I stick on in either the V or the Z shape, depending on how I'm gonna be putting it on the card front, I actually just take a little stamp and seal and stick it in the area where my ribbon is gonna land and it doesn't need to be pretty or nice or anything like that because no one is gonna see it anyway. And then I'm gonna take my pretty ribbon and stick it here on the card front. I'm gonna hold off on cutting it until I actually get it placed here on the card front so I know generally how long it needs to be, which I think we will probably get it on there with that. And I'm gonna grab my little um, ribbon scissors, which I finally remembered this time, Karen, you should be proud of me, and trim it at an angle. Slide that out of the way. And then the last thing that we have left on the card front is, um, just to stamp the sentiment and we'll be done with the card front. So, all right, so I've got balmy blue cardstock and I've got the sentiment here, which is the one that says, follow your dreams. And I've got Versamark ink and we're gonna do some heat embossing. So I'm just gonna ink this up, hopefully fairly well in Versamark ink, stamping it here on balmy blue cardstock. And then I'm gonna grab my copper embossing powder to match my copper lantern. And we'll sprinkle that over the top and then we'll start up the heat tool. So, all right, I'm gonna do one more sprinkle here and make sure that I get, hopefully get a good coating of that on there and try to pick off any of the extra stray ones. All right, close up my embossing powder so I don't spray that everywhere when I try to um, do the heat embossing. So the Stampin' Up! heat tool has got uh, two settings on it. Level one setting is for drying and level two setting is for heat embossing. So level, level one setting you can use if you have ink that um, you're water coloring with or something like that where it takes a little bit longer to dry. You can certainly use the level one setting to speed that up a little bit. And then the level two setting is a little hotter and so that is actually what we use for heat embossing. Um, Dad taught us Morse code, and I think we taught the same thing. I thought the same thing. <laughs> You're probably right. I just I'd never thought of that before. But that I'm like I said, I'm sure it's their way of communicating. So, all right. So we're going to take this and turn it towards the sentiment here that I've got stamped, and wait for it to start turning. Um, it'll get shiny and smooth as uh, the heat tool does its magic. All right, and then 
You don't want to overheat it because you can burn your embossing powder, um, which, yep, I've done it many times, and then it turns all brown and yucky and not very pretty. Um, but if you don't burn it, it looks nice and shiny. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so I've got the, uh, it's kind of, I don't know, I'll call it the more square of the rectangle dies from the stitched rectangle dies that I'm going to cut the sentiment out. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a, it's the, the one oddball <laughs> that doesn't fit inside any of the others. So that is the one we're going to use. And again, I'm going to be off screen for a second to do my die cutting. So I will be right back. There's our little die cut sentiment. And I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna put some stampin' dimensionals on it, but I'm gonna try to be careful to put the dimensionals kind of to the outer edges of it to make sure that it catches part of the paper on the card front and isn't just stuck to the ribbon. So, um, oh, no problem, Tara. Just feel free to hop back in, you know, catch the replay when you can. So, all right, let me stick on. These are my little half stampin' dimensionals. So again, I know that some people love them and some people do not. Um, I like them a lot. So, ooh, I got a hair or something in there, yuck. Um, all right, then I'm gonna take this one and turn it. And then take another one here and turn it. So again, I'm just gonna try to slide them out to the edges so that I can catch part of the paper uh, with the stampin' dimensionals so that it doesn't uh, wiggle or get loose or you know do anything crazy. And flip it over and put it on here the right way around. Um, again, I'm just going to kind of center it over my little stack of, of uh, greenery underneath it and a little bit over the, the ribbon and, you know, kind of scooch it down just a little so that it covers most of my goof where I um, didn't actually die cut that correctly. <laughs> so, but I don't think you can tell too much. So, all right, there we go. So that's it for the card front. Super simple. It's really easy, really fun. And I love that, you know, the lantern, we don't even have to do anything other than just cut it out. It looks awesome. So, all right, on the inside of the card, um, also kept it pretty simple in here. And I have got, again, my basic gray, not gray granite. And this is the larger of the little um, fireflies or... Um, lightning bugs, whatever you want to call them. And I've got this and I'm going to ink it up in basic gray and we're going to stamp it once up here towards the top. And then a second time down here, a little bit towards the bottom. And then I'm going to take my little circle image again and we're going to stamp that in Daffodil Delight ink over the, the um, bottom part of this lightning bug as well. And hopefully you can see a little bit better as I'm stamping this, um, that you can see through these pretty easily and see where to stamp it. Um, to put the little glow with your lightning bugs. And then the last thing that I did was took a little piece that I had trimmed from the card front. This is about a half inch wide. And again, it's from the Fancy Flora 6x6 Designer Series paper. And I'm just going to adhere that to the bottom of the basic white panel. Um, this panel measures about four by five and a quarter. And um, just going to, this is a little bit oversized, um, but I find it makes it a little easier to stick it on straight and get things where, well, hopefully straight, and <laughs> get things where I want them to be if I have a little bit of extra on the edge. So, hey, Kathleen, glad you're able to hop in. We're almost done. So um, then I'm just going to take my paper snips and trim this off even with the edge. And then we will adhere it to the inside of the card base and we'll be all done. So, all right, again, just using a little stamp and seal to adhere the piece together here um, with the inside of the card, or to the inside of the card, I should say, not with it. Um, just stick that in here. And that's going to be it for the inside of the card. So just added a couple little lightning bugs, a little bit of the designer series paper, and the inside is all decorated as well. And then I'm going to grab the bone folder and do a quick crease on here. So again, this is your side fold card. So this will definitely work with a side fold design. And then this is the top fold card that I prefer. Um, so it works with the top fold as well. So you can take your pick on which one you like better. Let me do this crease again, because apparently I was yakking and not getting it done the right way. So, um, so there we go. So that's it. It's a super simple card and definitely you all need to get this bundle starting on the 5th of January. Um, let me know if you have any questions about anything. Again, all the details will be on my blog tomorrow and I will link that up in, uh, I'll link directly to the blog post tomorrow um, as soon as the blog post goes live around eight o'clock Eastern time. So you'll be able to find all the details, all the card stack cuts, everything you need to make the card again. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Again, thanks for hopping in today.
today. Um, thanks for letting me take a few days off to uh, enjoy the holidays. Hope you all enjoy the holiday with your family. Happy New Year. Um, if anybody's going to be out celebrating tomorrow, just be careful and um, make sure you get home safely. So, all right. Um, I will plan to be back around 2 o'clock Eastern Time on Tuesday with another project and then back here again live around 2 o'clock Eastern Time on Friday. Have a great weekend. Um, we'll chat.